Welcome to the episode of Jay Lono's Garage. Here once again with one of my favorite cars, 65 Mustang. You know, the 65 Mustang has become sort of like this generation's version of the 32 Ford when I was a kid. When I was in high school, everybody wanted a 32 Ford. They modified them and made hot rods, and some put them back to stock, some made uh, gassers out of them. I mean, it was the most hot rodded car of all time. And the 65 Mustang, I think, has uh, just about reached that level. There's so many wonderful versions of it out. This one is one of the all time best. This is done by the Ring Brothers. You remember those two guys? They were here with that uh, incredible Chevelle. Take a look. Here's that long pull third gear. trouble with this car. Oh, I love that car. Well, you know, they don't just do anything normal. They always have to kind of take it over the top and make it a little bit better. Uh, the fact that, I, that it looks like a stock 65 Mustang is what I like, because to me, this is one of the best looking Mustangs of all time, one of the best looking cars of all time. But there, I don't think there's anything Mustang on this car left. But let's meet uh, Mike and Jim once again, the Ring Brothers. Come on in, boys. Hey, Jay. What, were you eating pizza Good before to see the show? You. Yeah, little pizza. <laughs> I'm going to say, geez. Well, as, as I said, it's a 65 Mustang, but it's not really a 65 Mustang. Not much left besides the glass. Now, the whole body is carbon fiber, correct? 100% carbon. Uh, roof, doors, fenders, hood, front, back, everything but the rocker panel. Well, the reason I'm asking is because uh, I, I'd like to think since you made a mold, for these uh, carbon fiber fenders for this car. I imagine the mold still exists. Can would people be able to buy? Yeah, actually, we actually did two different molds. We actually do a wide body version, right. which is what's on here. It's two inches wider. And we also do the standard version. So we do standard fenders uh, right. in carbon and the doors. So it's all carbon fiber. How much does the entire body weigh? If you took all the pieces and, and put them all together and scaled them, it'd be about 180 pounds. Really? Yeah. yeah. So you figure a stock body is probably close to seven, 800 pounds? In that yeah, ballpark. Guess, wow. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And this, it, it doesn't look like a wide body, but I guess it is. It's what, four inches wider? It is. We added two inches to the doors, fenders, and quarter panels and left the cockpit the same, which gives it a real kind of a hippie look from the back yeah. side you know the quarters are a little bit more hippie and right right just from the side profile who wants to ruin a 65 most people ever make anything a big tire under 65 they got the huge flares out. right yeah yeah well that's true yeah I guess it's I think it's a wide body because most of your customers are <laughs> yeah. wide bodies, yeah. so it just kind of makes everybody <laughs> feel a little bit better about yeah. themselves <laughs> all right so okay let's see what we have now all standard glass or did you have to make new glass. Nope. Everything else is, is completely 100% original uh, components. That was kind of the nice part about when we designed it. Uh, we wanted the doors and everything to fit all the original stuff. Well, I think that's exciting. So people could buy a carbon fiber hood, save a ton of weight. There. It'll bolt right on. Wow. Well, that's really, really exciting. Is that in the, okay, that's on the hood. It's not yep. coming through the, okay. Yep. We actually do a couple different versions of yeah. this hood. Um, we're actually unveiling another car at SEMA that has our different version on, uh, so that people will be able to see okay. both of them. Was there talk of leaving the body carbon fiber as opposed to painting it? Because I, I kind of like it, and then you tell people it's carbon fiber. It seems kind of cool. Yeah, well, hence the name Espionage. We're trying to kind of sneak a few things in here, mm -hmm. um, such as the car is 100% carbon, but there's paint over it. We, uh, we actually will have a full body on display at our SEMA booth this year, yeah. uh, which, you know, if you're there, there'll be coverage on it. You'll be able to see what it looks like without paint. So. Here's a silly question. What does the paint weigh? You know, I don't know mm, about that, question. but I'll bet it's pretty heavy. Is you know, you probably, ever picked a gallon of paint up, it's... That's what I mean. Yeah. It, the paint probably... Because I remember years ago, uh, during one of the Grand Prix in Europe, the Silver Arrow race cars were like... Were like uh, some kilometers, whatever it was, some small amount of weight over, and they stripped all the paint off them and ran them, because the German colors used to be white, yeah. the racing colors, and they stripped all the paint off them to get under the weight limit. Wow. And then they, then they just made it, that and then silver became, became the racing color. So I'm thinking you probably have 20, 30 pounds. I would be willing to bet that's, With yeah. the amount of clear that's on this car, and you know, there's yeah. seven coats of clear on it, so it adds up. 
It'd be funny if it weren't exactly the same. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We should put the paint on. Yeah. <laughs> get back, get back to right back to where you were. All right. Very cool. All right. Let's see. Well, well, there are so many little facts here. Now, premium fuel only. Now, do you have to put that on there? <laughs> no, it's, that's got a that's, little that's, tackiness to it. But uh, That's the Ring Brothers that's for you. Just they the don't know when to stop. We don't know when yeah. to quit. Yeah, I mean, it seems like, oh, you know, it's like... Yeah, drive safely. Yeah. Obey all limits. Why do I mean, uh, Why do all the other manufacturers sticker them all? Well, up? that's the law. You have to have it. Oh, yeah. I well, remember we were when, following uh, the law. Huh? We're following the law. I think it was when when my when my McLaren P1 came in. Oh, I couldn't pick it up because the sticker that said "use unleaded fuel only" hadn't come in yet, oh and they couldn't gosh. legally relate. Well, you can't even get leaded fuel <laughs> yeah. anymore. But oh, you can't pick it up until the official sticker comes from England, and they put it on like that. All right, very cool. And this is the fuel filler. Yeah, yeah. It is. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I thought maybe it might be a full fuel filter, but okay, that's a real one. Okay. So so let's. Uh, Take us around the car. So there's really not much of a flare here at all. No, there's actually pretty much a stock quarter, but we, what we did, if you looked at a regular Mustang, the wheel openings aren't symmetrical, though. Right. They kind of come around the corner and do some. Yeah. So we, we rounded them out and lowered them in the rear, made the rockers lower to cover like the existing pinch weld. So many little features. Tell me about these door handles. You make these? We do. You know, that's, we do GM ones, we do Ford ones. Yeah. Um, that, uh, that's kind of a stock door handle that we put a little you know, twist to it. Right, um, okay. Let me see. And I have the little carbon fiber mirror here. Yeah. I like the absence of chrome. And almost, what is this crinkle type That's finish? a crinkle powder coat. Okay. It's just a, like a textured powder coat. I mean, it, it could be smooth, but we've been using that for a yeah. while, and I kind of like it. It almost looks like malleable rubber, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. Like the it, was there talk of leaving this chrome as in stock? I'm not a big chrome guy anymore, right, so yeah. we tend to black things out. And chrome is hard to do now environmentally right. because of the, yeah. Yeah, all the acid and whatnot involved. All right, let's move around to the front. We'll get to the rear of the car a little bit later. Always love the classic uh, Shelby hood pins. Yep, yep. And those are your own design. That's our own, yeah. Okay. It almost seems like you have to put a little lock in here to keep people from stealing them. Yeah. Well, they like to steal the pins out of them yeah, for some that, reason. But. That is a thing that gets stolen if you yeah. leave the car around, but better that than the car. I love the fact that you have reasonable ground clearance. Mm -hmm. You know, somebody make these cars, you can't even go out of a driveway right, or yep. pull into a gas station. So I like the normal ride height. Uh, tell me about these wheels, custom to this car? Uh, it's an HRE wheel. Okay. Um, it's a wheel that, uh, you know, we've been using HRE a while. They make a great wheel, and uh, we just thought this wheel was appropriate for the car. Um, and what is this? It, I know what black chrome is. Is this like a gray chrome? Is that what you call it? It's a brushed, dyed anodizing, where they actually brush it. You can see the brush strokes through it, okay. and then they tint the clear is okay. what they do. Okay. And let's, what brakes are those? I remember the bare. Uh, they happened to put our names on them, in okay. case you didn't know who we were. Okay, I think yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's see. Let's come around the front of the car. Uh, pretty stock appearing. That's the modern R. Is that off the latest, right? That's been our logo for a long oh, time. Oh, it looks, like, you know, it looks uh, like the R that's on the new uh, GT350. R, the new Mustang, almost looks to be the same. Yeah, no, well, we've got that. the backwards B on ours. Cause okay. Everybody thought we were a little backwards growing up, so oh, we thought okay. that was appropriate. Yeah, well, I think so. That's <laughs> funny. That's funny. Uh, much wider grill openings, right? With much wider grill. Yeah, it takes in a lot of air. And the uh, intercoolers down below. So tell us what we have here engine-wise. It's got a uh, uh, blown 416 cubic inch. You're going to make me say it, aren't you? What's that? Chevy. Oh, it's got a Chevy. <laughs> dun, 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 dun! <laughs> <laughs> it was something. <laughs> thank God, thank you, thank you. <laughs> exactly. Well, Hence the name espionage. Yeah, we, okay. we talked we were this trying to hide it. You were supposed to bring it up. To me because, yeah, you know, you, you those kind of, say sometimes it. those sort of mixed marriages don't work oh, out. Oh, they don't. And now, that's weird. They know what a Ford guy say when they find oh, out. Oh, my We were hoping Lord. they won't, so huh? you're going to clip oh, this part, yeah. right? Now, why not go with a, a, a Ford motor? Honestly, the gentleman we built this car for, his mechanics at one point said, really, the only thing that we can really work on and do well over here is our Chevy motors, like mm -hmm. an LS-based motor. And right. I said, well, would you be against putting an LS motor in it? It's a lot smaller package. Right. It can make a lot more power out of them than, I mean, 
for size wise. I mean, right. if you put a, a 5.8 liter or a 5.4, you know, we got valve covers coming out of the fenders where I can put this yeah. little tiny package in there, make the horsepower you want. Right. And he was like, I'm good with that. He said, yeah. I'm, I'm driving the car, Jim. And, uh, that's that's why I'm getting this car. So well, see, I in know this era where we have Caitlyn Jenner and everybody, we have to be more <laughs> understanding of these things. Yes. So I I think it's very good. Um, I think it's very good. It's that's a hard one. I, everybody listen to Jay. He yeah. thinks it's very no, good. No, I think it's, it, I think it I think it's fine. I think we accept everybody and all combinations. There's never been a there's never been a Chevy motor put in a 32 Ford ever. Uh, yeah. Well, well yeah. <laughs> well, well, that's true. That's true. So that. So that's interesting. No, no, I think it, it just sort of hit me that you just, you know, Ford guys, they come with the hats and the, and the Chevy guys come and they got the t-shirts and the tattoo. And, and, it, and, and when you mix the two, it's just, it doesn't go. People really get riled up, don't it they? It is oh, oil and we water. Had, we had it in the Pantera and it was, yeah, it was really tough. So this yeah. is going to be even greater. Okay, well, let's open it up and, and see what we have. We are coming with a, with one with a Ford motor in it. Huh? We, we do these in Ford motors yeah. too, by the way. Oh, it's a Ring Brothers engine. <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> there you uh, go. We're back to that Carl Wagner. Okay, is that a Whipple? That is. Yeah, it's okay. A Whipple. Whipple supercharger on there. Okay, so that's what, 413 cubic? 416. A oh, 416, yeah. great motor, okay. And what kind of horsepower? Makes about nine, probably around 950. You know, today if it's 100 out, um, it'll probably back it off quite a bit with heat, but it, yeah. uh, it's, a, it's an animal. Okay, now how are you getting the heat out of here? Well, you got the hood scoop. Oh, we've got it through the fenders too. Yeah. The inner fenders, we've got it all opened up and as much as we can and just with the intercooler it actually you'll see it runs it doesn't run yeah because you know when i did my ford seven liter that big mm -hmm. galaxy i never had that problem with en under hood heat i always seemed like oh, it's not a big deal and <clears throat> i would go down the road like a day like today and it was just choking mm -hmm. the engine was just choking all the time and then finally i just had to open, open it, it up yeah open it up. yeah yeah boy it's a beautiful installation you guys and what transmission are you using this has got a bowler uh, six-speed. Oh. Yeah, oh, okay. yeah, I know it's we're all good there. <laughs> it was it's a tough call, you know. Honestly, it's it's uh, we've lost sleep over that motor yeah, in this yeah, car. Yeah. Um, but it is what it is, and and I have somebody else paying the bills on this one, so right. I and just that's, do that's, what they that's, tell that's me. That's what they wanted. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's, it's a, you were just following orders, yes? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> We were told to put the Chevy, so we put the Chevy. Okay, very good. Well, it just—I must admit—it just thunderstruck me when you said that. It just seemed so funny. Yeah. You just, you we just were hoping you wouldn't ask. Yeah, well, we you just don't see that, you know. No, no, but I think it's cool. And when do you see the comment section? Oh yeah, my God. yeah, yeah. I'm sure it'll be all good. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's put our pins back in. I recognize that hood scoop. What is it off of? Actually, it's. No. It might look like something, but it made it by from hand from just, foam. Huh? Oh, it, out of foam. it just looks like the CUDA hood. Yeah, it does. It okay. does have that. Okay. I must admit, I don't see how much wider it is, but it is wider, like you said. If you look, well, you can really see it in the in the tops of the fenders and the yeah, tops of the doors. Yeah, here to here. Yeah, right. okay, I got gotcha. you. And across the door is where you really And the shunt lines it. are all just fantastic, you guys. Really nice. God, such a light door. It almost looks like it's on... And that's the original hinge. We are going to build hinges so it'll even be better. Boy, it really looks nice. It almost looks factory. You notice there's no gauges in this car. Well, there is. There's a race pack down the center, but... Okay. I um, didn't, you know, I didn't notice that yet. Let's come around to the back. Well, this is interesting. This adjustable uh, spoiler or airfoil. It is. You know, it's, again, we can't leave nothing alone, and it would have been fine without it. Yeah. But it seems to. You can't, now, let me ask you a question. You have to loosen it to adjust it. Because I can move it a little bit. It seems to me at high speed under pressure that it would. It, it probably will. It probably will. So we would have to mount it. Actually, it's not drilled through at this. But probably besides you, it'll probably be the fastest this car is being driven. Huh? I mean, it, it's, it's, it's well, not as effective. Correct. Yeah. Okay. We're honestly used to driving a. a Winnebago with a thousand horse, a seventy-two. Right. 
is really scary, so this doesn't scare us at all. No. Okay. <laughs> now, this is normally where your filler cap would have been in the stock Mustang. It is. It's a uh, third brake light now. Okay, now it's just a third brake light. Okay. And where are our exhaust exiting? They actually come out the belly pan. It's kind of hard to see, but. Okay. That's interesting that. because most people like to have that. Right out in the, your the face. The big trumpets, like the you know, and the GTs. whole deal. That's interesting. I think I like that. Yeah, just because everybody else. It's just standard thing where you want to have a big beer can right. size opening. Does right. the car to you from here scream wider from back here? It does seem wider from the back, you know. Yeah, but that's sort of, sort of most people. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, they go, oh. Yeah, it does uh, seem a little wider. And the taillights, obviously, those are custom. Those are not the stock, stock uh, taillights. Yeah, from the back, it does seem uh, a little bit wider. I and mean, what color is that? Is that? A... We call it spy green. It's okay. kind of a tank looking color. Is it off an existing uh, vehicle or commercial vehicle or did you just mix it yourself? It is actually off a, the new Jeep. Well it's interesting because it does soften the, it makes you focus on the line of the car more than the, the carbon fiber or anything else. You notice the orange meets the white stripe yeah, separation. Yeah. That's interesting. Why that? Now why is? You know I don't know. Um, Hopefully someday we can bring the U.S. and Russia together right there. <laughs> and Russia is orange and we're yeah. the I thought maybe two brothers don't speak to one another. Yeah, they that's have to back that's as close one. Uh -oh. as we get. That could be. Yeah, yeah. They meet in the front, but we definitely... And what do we have here? Obviously, this is carbon fiber. We I'm just, surprised we, you didn't leave this. We, we normally do. Out. We normally do, so yeah. it was just something different. Okay, Again, we didn't want to leave a lot of carbon. We wanted people to say, why would you do that? Yeah, yeah. Like the Chevy motor. Gotcha. And the piece around, I like that trim piece. Yeah, it's just there. trim we made just to give it a different look. Again, you know, that adds weight. That's aluminum. That's right. milled, but it wasn't Now, about... you can't access this compartment from the trunk. No. no. Right, okay, no. just like a stock. Okay. Well, very impressive, gentlemen. What is the rear end ratio in this? This one's actually got the right one in it. It's got a 355 in it. Oh, that's nice. And, uh, and a little it's... shorter tire than the Chevelle. Has. And a six-speed, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that must give you a pretty good top end, doesn't it? It, it just feels really right. Um, yeah. It's still a little squirrelier through second gear, and then it, and then it starts hooking. So. Now, let's take a look at the interior. All right, so there's no gauge package at all. Nope, it's got a race pack down the center. Okay. Um, and that honestly, tells me what? It'll tell you everything. It'll tell you speed. It'll tell you your tack. It'll tell you your fuel, your oil pressure. It'll right. tell you everything the motor's doing. But you've got to press buttons. To no, uh, the, there's two different screens. The okay. first screen on it that comes up when the car's running actually gives you everything you'd need, uh, oil pressure, yeah. fuel, everything. Um, if you want to get into timing and other things, you can go to another page. But Do you find most people now prefer that? I mean, I have to admit, I like the old analog type gauges, you know, with each precision number and it's almost chronometric, it, yep. it moves, you know. I think, you know, obviously gauges, when you put gauges in the car, it's like putting a watch on, you know, it just looks right. And, right, and, right. But um, driving this car and when you take this down the road, it's actually a nice feeling. You're not trying to look through the wheel. Everything's like there at a glance. Right. Um, it's just something different, you know, we're not saying it's right. Right, no, no, but, I like uh, it. It looks good. And beautiful, obviously, seats with Caro seats. and. Lovely stitching here. The stitching is fantastic, you got Nicely done. It's got air and all the other options yep. as well. Radio in it or no? No radio. No radio. Because no. I guess that'd be extra. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it didn't want to spring for the heater <laughs> and the radio. And the, yeah, yeah, yeah. That AM um, radio. I think you $64 have a, now, you, you, you have a Corvette miss. with a radio and uh, heater delete, don't you? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Right. My 57 yeah. has that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, key entry or just a fob? It's got a fob. Okay. I can show you in the trunk, the fuel cell, uh, where the fuel comes down to it and the tubs. And Let's take a look at that. Like. Dumb question. Is the key always in there or it comes out? <laughs> <laughs> key comes out. Okay. Oh, well, boy. What a beautiful installation. The battery back here. Battery back there. Um, I like those Optimas. And, you know, those, there's no acid. It doesn't rust out. Yep. Run yep. out your truck. Dry cell, all it can okay. flip over. It's all and you good. you got a battery switch here. What is this? It's a flashlight. Just a flashlight, okay. Um, you can see the carbon tubs. Even the tubs were, the inner wheelhouses were carbon. The fuel pump. Yeah, that's actually the filter, but yes. Oh, filter, okay, yeah. yeah. Pumps in the tank. Tanks in the tank, that's yep. right, okay, yeah. Yeah, very nice. And what is that about? Uh, 
16? That is a, that's a 16 in there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, we build our own latches that they come down on, you know, gotcha. the old steel one. But Nice. Can't get a whole lot in the trunk. You can't no. get much. A couple Especially blocks of cheese. We, we yeah. raise it just so it doesn't look like a diaper hanging. What down. do we got here? That's actually the uh, inertia switch. Oh, in case you get in case you get hit, it shuts the fuel pumps off. I got you. Okay. Well, I, it's it's great when you put those kind of safety devices in the car. Most people who build cars like this don't really think in those terms. That's terrific. And again, the whole the whole body is carbon fiber, and it weighs 180 pounds. Wow. I weigh more than a Mustang. <laughs> That's not good. That's not good. Can we take it for a ride? Let's Absolutely. do it. Which, who wants to go? I you think Jim. Go? I think, uh, no, I, I don't know if I can handle Jay's driving. All right, I'll go. All right. <laughs> That's very nice one. It's got a really nice feel to it. Boy, it really does. Well, the initial impression, I've only gone a mile, but boy, it's got it's got so much bottom end, it's just full. And it feels so incredibly light. Obviously, it's power steering. Yeah. The weight on this car is real low. You know, yeah. twin floor pans, um, the whole bottom's pretty aerodynamic, and it just, I think the weight's in the right spot. Yeah, yeah. Well, once again, you're taking it on its maiden voyage. Yeah, it's very exciting. Gearbox. What transmission did you say it was? It's got a Tremec 6 speed. Oh, it is a Tremec 6 speed, okay. These 6 speeds tend to shift a lot nicer than the old 5 speed did for some yeah. reason. I've never had a lot of good luck with that 5 speed. This thing just shifts so well. I love the Tremec gearboxes. They, yeah. they work in any application, they can take a beating. Yep. We did a little Daimler, we put a Tremec in that, just snick right through it. Maven Voyage, correct? It is. 
Sounds like drive shafts, so we'll see. Let's see what we got, boys. What is it? Is it like it's rubbing, Jim? Or? It's Boy. got a violent noise. <laughs> it's the joints look finer. There's no, I thought maybe it's hitting this. Now, nowhere to hit there, is there? Drive shaft ain't coming apart. No. Is it backing plate? Uh, wait a minute, what do we got here? Backing plate or caliper move? No. That's not that no that noise that would stay on like that, you know, it's... Is it at like all speeds? Huh? Does it stay on at all this different speeds? It'll stay on until you slow all the way down and it'll go away and then... Okay, these are in the right position, right? Yeah. I don't see any witness marks, do you? No. What's that here? What do you got here? Uh, okay, it. here it is. Got it. Here, look at this. Right, there you go. That's what it is. Okay, we got it. It's just a coil rubbing against the... Well. The coil is rubbing it. What it is, it compresses, and then and then it stays there until it, until it until you get it to move. It, it unsprings it, you know. And it's probably sending that noise through the right carbon. Right through the carbon. Yeah, like right here. Look at that. I mean, that's a cut right there. Have you got it on this side as well? No. No. It wouldn't be because that's the pan hard bar. Oh, that's right. Mount. Okay. Yeah. So it's really nothing to worry about. It's just drive you nuts noise right now. You so just, we well, you we need to move say, the shock over. Move the shock over or get us, not as wide as spring. Right. We'll and just move the shock you over. Want to show, can you get a shot of that? See? And it's the rubber. And what happens is when you get it down, the spring stays, since the spring stays against that, it you know, can't release. Can you hit it with the light? There you go, there you go right there. Must be a violent noise, huh? It's well, it just sounds pretty bad, yeah. Well, I'm glad that's all it was. The joys yeah. of building cars. Huh? The joys of building cars. I mean, look how clean the build is underneath. It's pretty amazing. Hey, we were blaming our poor drive shaft, and it wasn't the drive shaft at all, so. I don't see the tire rubbing. You know. I guess we have to do a burnout now. <laughs> no choice. <laughs> I think you should oblige. Okay, well, we found the problem. The spring was rubbing against the penard bar there, and uh, that wasn't too serious. We'll shim that over a little bit. Uh, here we were blaming the, the carbon fiber drive shaft. So I want to apologize to any carbon fiber <laughs> drive shafts that are out there. I thought I might have to call my buddies at Fort Wayne Clutch and Driveline, but no, we don't have to do that. So, all right. But you know, no matter what the problem is, you still have to do a burnout. Hey, I don't make the rules. Actually, I do make the rules. Let's do a burnout. <laughs> Boy, this thing hooks up nicely. I'm even only at half throttle. I'm just losing. You want to try one? I want to try one. All right, let's let the kids try one. All right, I guess so. I'm never letting these guys anywhere near my cars. <laughs> Thanks, guys. That was a lot of fun. Thanks, Jerry. I think that was kind of cool. We kind of found the problem. We figured out what it was. Uh, boy, this thing hooks up nicely. You know, I was, I was only even half throttle because I was afraid I was going to get side wounds with it. But boy, it's, it's really controllable. It's really nice. Nice work. Thanks, Jerry. You got to order a set of these carbon fiber fenders if you got a '65 Mustang. It's the greatest. See you next week.